Topping today's news, more families left distraught after the murder count climbs over the weekend. Grand Bahama International Airport gets a new development board. The Prime Minister, Mr. Davis, continues to hammer away at accessing funding to fight the effects of climate change and the latest on the training for vendors to prevent instances of conch poisoning. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jerry Osandis. This is your JCN Evening News. Thanks for joining us. A bloody weekend here in the capital, leaving criminal detectives with the task of investigating two homicides in less than 48 hours, as well as three separate shooting incidents on Sunday. The country's 90th homicide was recorded Sunday night on Stack Avenue in Nassau Village. Our Destiny Johnson was on the scene and files this report. A weekend married by violence here in the capital as police investigate three separate shooting incidents, one of them resulting in the country's latest homicide. While celebrating the expectancy of a new life at a baby shower Sunday night, one man was shot and killed by unknown assailants, the country's 90th homicide for the year. Police say five people, including four juveniles, were shot on Stack Avenue, Nassau Village. According to Chief Superintendent of Police, Chrisling Skippings, the shooting unfolded shortly before 9 p.m. Preliminary information is that Persons had gathered for a baby shower at the triplex just behind me when two males exited from a gray Nissan Note and opened fire indiscriminately on the crowd, which resulted in the 22-year-old being shot multiple times. He succumbed on scene and was pronounced dead. And the four juveniles were taken to the hospital where presently seeking medical attention at this time and so at this time I am unable to say to you exactly what their condition is in hospital at this time. However, in short order, in a subsequent press release, you will be updated as to their conditions. All of the victims are males in this particular incident. At last report, the condition of the four juvenile males is unknown. One female on the scene of last night's shooting, who identified herself as the victim's girlfriend, told JCN News that she had spoken to him just before the incident, advising him not to go to the location. She feels his death is a matter of being at the wrong place at the wrong time. Chief Superintendent Skipping says, as police are early in their investigation, she could not say if the victim was the intended target nor could she speak to the motive behind this indiscriminate shooting. Just prior to the shooting incident, another male was shot in the Baintown area. We did have a shooting um, that would be Fleming Street that happened around 8.30 this evening where another young male, he was walking on Fleming Street when two male occupants of a of a cube, a dark colored cube, opened fire on that particular male. He was able to evade those persons and subsequently he is at hospital right now being treated for his injuries. Chief Superintendent Skipping says that the male's injuries do not appear to be life threatening. Another man was shot shortly after 5 p.m. Sunday on Charles W. Sanders Highway, west of Gulf Course Boulevard. The 23-year-old, according to police, was walking west along the highway when occupants of a gray Nissan Note fired shots at him. He was taken to the hospital where he was treated for his injuries. Chief Superintendent Skippings gives this appeal. Family members, parents, siblings, you know exactly who your family have conflicts with. You know, let's help you to save them. The only way that can happen is by you partnering with your police department. Bring the information to us. Let us sit down. Let us show these young people how to resolve conflicts. Picking up a weapon does not resolve the conflict. It actually escalates the conflict. 
and then it extends the conflict because then you have innocent people who end up getting shot or being shot. And so I want to encourage family members and members of this great Bahamas, those of you who know persons who are in possession of illegal weapons, you need to reach out to our department. Let us know. Because the same person who may have that weapon, who you do not inform us of, that same person can actually turn that weapon and use that weapon. These shootings follow a homicide early Saturday morning when a man was gunned down outside the Charms nightclub in the Centerville area following an altercation. Chief Superintendent Skipping says police do not have a suspect in custody. Chief Superintendent Skipping says police do have a suspect in custody. They are still speaking into... Oof. These shootings follow a homicide early Saturday morning when a man was gunned down outside the Charms nightclub in the Centerville area following an altercation. Chief Superintendent Skipping says police do have a suspect in custody that they are speaking to in relation to this matter. Police are actively investigating these matters and are appealing to members of the public who may have any information on this or any other matters to please contact the Criminal Investigations Department at 502 999 991 or 2, 919 or 911, or Crime Stoppers at 328 TIPS. Thanks for that report, Destiny. Less than a week after his body was found stuffed in a garbage bag in the trunk of his black Honda Fit, 21 year old Omar Davis Jr., alleged killer, was arraigned in court today in the magistrate court. 20-year-old Norman Toussaint appeared before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt, accused of intentionally and unlawfully causing the death of Omar on August 15th. It was on Tuesday, August 16th, that police made the gruesome discovery of Omar's body in his car, which was parked in a lot just behind Centerville Food Store. He had multiple stab wounds to the face, head, and chest area. His body was also in the early stages of decomposition, according to Chief Superintendent Michael Johnson. Following the tragedy, family members revealed to Love 97 News that Omar was last seen around 11 a.m. on Monday, August 15th. In court today, Davis's relatives were visibly emotional as they wept while Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt read the charges. Toussaint was not required to enter a plea due to the nature of the charges, and as the magistrate lacked the jurisdiction to grant bail, he was remanded to the Bahamas Department of Corrections. Toussaint returns to court on December 27. Following that brutal killing of 21-year-old Omar Davis Jr., a young Bahamian male who defied all of the odds and has a bright, promising future, or had a bright, promising future, National Security Minister Wayne Monroe, in voicing concerns over the heinous killing of young Omar, says systems must be put in place to prevent these kinds of things from happening. The sort of a thing that would cause you to look and say that life is really unfair. Because we tell young men they have to avoid violence. We tell young men that they have to study hard to become positive citizens, contributing citizens. And here he was, he was doing all of those things. And yet this happens. So I've taken an interest in it to see, see why would this happen to someone like that. Because we have to do our best to see, to put in place systems that stop these things happening. Um, as the press conference today addressed, we must address these things systemically and collectively. And so that's a national tragedy. It's a national tragedy in terms of this as a young contributing Canadian who we now don't realize his potential. To Last Tuesday, Davis Jr. was found in the trunk of his black Honda Fit with multiple stab wounds about the body. Commissioner of Police Clayton Fernanda recently told reporters that police have identified the location where Davis was killed. Issues when an adult goes missing that is slightly different than when a child goes missing. When a child goes missing, who should be at a home with the parent? That is more of an automatic trigger than when an adult who may decide to travel, who may decide to do other things, doesn't go back to where the youth is. I do not know what is being said about what they know about her. It suggests something about past history. 
but the police certainly have an obligation if somebody is missing to make um, inquiry. I like to alert the public to little simple things that they can do. Most people are walking around here with a smartphone. Most people are, a lot of people are walking around here with iPhones. There's an ability to track my iPhone. Samsung's give you the ability to track your phone. We need to start to be proactive to let, unless you have a reason to not let them, let people have the ability to track your phone. It might save your life. Meantime, Minister Monroe also responding to public outrage after the family of 27-year-old Rochelle Le Woodside told police that when they reported her missing, police said they would not start the case because of the type of person Rochelle is. The Minister of National Security, Mr. Monroe, says cases differ between adults and minors, but regardless of that fact, officers are still responsible for assisting family in finding their missing family members. Rochelle, also known as Dada, has been missing since Thursday, August 11th, and was last seen at her residence on Washington Street around 6 p.m. that evening. She is described as having a brown complexion, 5 feet 11 inches tall, slim build. If you have any information on her whereabouts, please contact the Criminal Investigation Department. Residents can expect clinical Christian counseling services starting this Monday. This coming from the Bahamas Christian Council President Bishop Delton Fernanda, who says the initiative is a part of a partnership with the Ministry of National Security and the Christian Council to provide help to those in the community. A hotline will be available and all churches will be offering assistance. We took the initiative as the Christian Council, first of all, to ask all of our churches and pastors to make their facilities available. Uh, so that persons can call in, come in, and receive counseling uh, on those facilities. But specifically, uh, beginning Monday, a line will be set up from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. 326-3152. 326-3152. This is led by Apostle Brenda Park, uh, at the Global Worship Center, one of our churches and one of our leaders in the council. But in particular, it's been my task to prepare chaplains and clinical Christian counselors. This is something I've been saying for my last two terms as president. We have some 40 Christian trained clinical counselors that will be available at 17th Rosetta Street, Garnet, Monroe Center. If you need help, you can call in from 10 to 3. Obviously, any church in your community will do. But if you book an appointment here, a trained Christian, I want to emphasize that clinical counsel, we're going to talk about Christ. Bishop Fernando reveals that an office of the Christian Council is in the works. This will be the official Christian Counseling Center for the nation. Minister of National Security Wayne Monroe contends that the counseling initiative is very important, especially in high-stress times such as these. The main goal is to curb violence and inform the public that there are resources available. And so what we are hoping to do in these initiatives is not to tell you that the church is doing anything new or different, but to let you know what is available, what has always been available, and to urge you, if you are in need of it, to take advantage of it. That if you are under stress, if you feel that you have to react in a manner that may not be in accordance with the laws, if you just feel at your wit's end that there are resources available to you. There are many, many churches in this country. Their doors are open. Senior pastor of Kingdom Summit Ministries and director of the People's Center, Carlos Reed, appeals to the public and parents to take this opportunity to deal with their anger and the anger of their children. So my appeal to everybody, even as we bring about programs 
to take advantage of the water that's set before you. Parents, if you have problems with your kids and you don't know how to deal with them, then call us so we can connect them with shock treatment. We also have some other programs that we're going to be implementing in short order that's going to be able to help alleviate some of the pressure, particularly parents are faced with. But we want to encourage you that if you feel that you are overwhelmed before it reaches a point that you cut a movie like the young people say, reach out to somebody. I believe that in most cases, when you talk about it, it helps you to deal with it more than if you try to keep it on the inside. They say precious, but it's bike. Don't let your bike bite. Find some help. Find some help. Bishop Fernando says the initiative will last as long as there is violence in the country. And finally, in this segment, there is a new board of directors for the Freeport Airport Development Company, or FAD, Minister of Tourism, Investments, and Aviation, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper, making that announcement in a statement on Sunday evening. In April of last year, the minister-led administration brought, or bought rather, the Grand Bahama International Airport, the GBIA, for $1, the acquisition coming via the airport authority. The Grand Bahama International Airport, which was owned and operated by Freeport Harbor Company was extensively damaged during Hurricane Dorian in September of 2019. In his statement, Deputy Prime Minister Cooper says the Freeport Airport Development Company will function much like the Nassau Airport Development Company, or NAD, and is charged with overseeing the management and redevelopment of the airport. The chairman of the Freeport Airport Development Company is Tara Ramming, a certified public accountant with a significant or with significant experience in business and finance. Directors include Managing Director of the Airport Authority, Peter Rutherford, Attorney Casita McIntosh, Businessman Albert Hepburn, and Forrester Carroll, Engineer Julian Sawyer, and Airline Executive and Representative of the Tourism Development Company, Harold Williams. The, to the Tourism and Aviation Ministry says the appointment of the board is a major step towards the development of a world-class airport and to restore economic vitality to Grand Bahama. Mr. Cooper says the board will provide oversight of all aspects of the airport's redevelopment, which the government aims to have completed sometime in 2025. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back after these commercials.